Okay, hi. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about this uh, MS70 CDR format. And in fact, it's any of the older pedals. So just a recap, you have the ZDLs, which are the first generation uh, Zoom FX, and that you can manipulate with the Zoom device manager. And then you have the second generation ZD2s, and that's things like a G1X4, B1X4, G5N, uh, G3N, that sort of pedal. And a combination of Munjwell and stuff I've done and other people, um, Nomad by it, to name a few, um, have really got to grips with most of what's happening inside those. Then you've got this hybrid, the GCE, which is quite a neat little device. I have one on my desk here, which pretends to be a multiple of these second generation pedals. And then you've got the modern pedals, the MS70 CD Plus, which Munjwell and um, a few guys are working on. I, I don't have one, so I'm not going to play in that area. So inside my Git, I've got a directory that I've just created. Um, so Pants is in the main uh, GitHub, and there's a README file. If we look at the README, uh, which tells you you need to do some pip installing, and then you need to run process firmware one. Uh, now, let's have a quick look at what I've got in the file. And this won't be checked in. So these these things here are linked from above. Um, so you link ln minus s dot dot slash do elf dot shell to space dot. Same with that. This is the firmware file that you can download. I'm, I'm not going to put it into the Git and process firmware um, so my process firmware reads this splits it into a series of zdls then we use this extract zdl device icon which is based on munjwell's zd2 device icon extractor and some work from this elinux elinx guy so i'll just show you it up front this guy here uh, Russian dude had done some work on pulling out icons of the older pedals um, and this is Munchal stuff where he has his um, uh, code or what have you so I've married the two together so we can do something so let's let's get on with it we do a Python of process firmware and we want to do the MS70 and this is running on a Pi for real time and that was pretty quick so we had what six or seven files now we've got a plethora so let's have a quick look at one of them. We have, for example, smoothdelay.json, and that is an attempt to pull out the data from inside the FX in a sensible way, which you can use to load into programs to, to know the maximum MIDI uh, values and what have you. Um, I will be doing more work. How I found the Russian dude's work is I was trying to understand some of the extra bytes inside the file and I realized that these were floating point numbers and then that's how I found the Russian dude that was doing some stuff and then his icon work which was cool yeah and and then we used the elf format to pull apart certain structure inside the elf file and that would allow us to get the icons now but there's a bit more work to do as the Russian dude did I'll be looking at that code to make it more efficient so that's look at the next thing which is the do elf and what this is doing is it's reading in the elf files that were extracted just a minute ago and then it's basically using a combination of modified Munjil code to pull out the pick effect type is what it's looking for and we're going to get some pngs um so i'm going to change the no, I'll run it like this and I'll change the resolution so you can see what's going on. Yeah, not this won't work for every file that's been extracted, some are wrong. Yeah, so what we're going to do is to say dot slash do elf. Uh, this will now start running. What I'll do now is I'll change the uh, preference to make it smaller so you can see it running in real time and then I'll pause it because it takes a little while to run this. So let's put this down to 10, that'll be okay. Uh, if I don't do this, you can't see it. But if I don't make it bigger, you can't. There we are. And you can see it's pulling out the, um, uh, you know, detune, base detune. So there's, it's pulling out the icon from inside. This is pretty cool, I think. Um, uh, combination of different people's work. I just glued it together. I'm the plumber here. So what I'll do now is I will pause this. Um, uh, I'll do it the hard way because when I did it last time, I think it stopped everything. So let's just pause this. Uh, pause recording. 
and I'll be back when this is done. It'll take about five minutes. Okay, so that was it. It's got to the Z-Trom. Uh, what do we get now? Well, now we get a load of PNGs. Let's have a look at that. Uh, oh, sorry, that's too small. I'll, I'll leave the font small because changing it back would be a pain. Uh, and so let's look at the Corona Try. So FEH is a program you can install for looking at icons. Uh, corona try.png and there it is so there's one uh, and obviously you can use this in your programs if you want to create a, a program to do this stuff let's look at the Zedtron uh, F-E-H Z Tron and this is the little baby version of that yeah so I've checked the code in so you can run it if you want on your downloaded firmwares. It runs on a B1 on. In fact, we can just see that now. If I uh, control C, if I pop the directory, it will take me to the B1 on. Here's one I prepared earlier, ls star.png. Um, there's a Zetron again. So let's look at that. F-E-H Zetron.png. And there it is. So it seems to work quite well. I'm going to improve it. I will pull out the decimal numbers if I can, because I want to use those to help with the displays. But um, yeah, a combination of using other people's work, giving them credit and modifying it. Uh, I'm quite pleased with this. And I'll show you in another video how we can take the alpha part in a different way. OK, thank you for watching and bye bye. Oh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Yeah, cheers. Bye.